Well, not your typical Friday ball game. Um, two really good pitchers starting, and <clears throat> you know Isaiah will probably tell you he didn't have his best stuff, and uh, left a lot of balls in the middle. Kentucky did a really nice job of shooting the ball the other way, and you know jumping some pitches and laying off some borderline pitches. And uh, I think that at the beginning of the game, it seemed like the zone was smaller. It kind of moved around a little bit. Um, both pitchers were struggling, um, but uh, you know. We fell behind on a crazy play that I got a big base hit with the bases loaded and two outs. And, uh, you know, left fielder drops the ball out of his glove. Guys are advanced. He makes a throw. No, you know, three run score. And uh, it doesn't look good for us. I think they get a base hit after that. And uh, all of a sudden, bang, we're down pretty good. And uh, we climbed right back into it. And then. Uh, Kind of the same thing happened again. They scored three. Um, you know, they got their guy kind of rolling again. They got a full bullpen, a bunch of guys that can bring bring it a little bit, as you saw. And we just kept swinging. We just kept playing. And, uh, you know, just proud of the guys for hanging in there and, and going up there and putting together some quality at bats and getting some pitch counts up. And, uh, you know, got a big three-run homer and a couple of clutch hits and held on. But, uh it was a good win for us, obviously. Nesbitt's had RBIs all year, but yep. six tonight is pretty incredible. Yeah, he uh, he came up clutch. You know, he obviously he got the the sack fly, and he got had the three run homer, uh, the big double down the line, drove in two more, and you know, obviously again we uh, we wouldn't we wouldn't be sitting here talking about a win if he didn't have the big night, and that's what it takes, you know. Somebody picking you up, somebody having a big night, and uh, you know Tennessee. They came out and swung the bats, and uh, you know it ended up turning into kind of a slugfest. And uh, I don't think either coach probably saw that coming. I know I didn't. What did you think of the way Costa Shock and then Cronin were able to slam the door there? Well, Costa had a really good eighth. Uh, you know, when he came in in the seventh, he gave up a couple of hits and a run and then had to get out of that jam. I mean, they're, they're one hit away from tying it up. So that was nice that he, he got the, I think he struck out the pinch hitter. Um, but the eighth was great. Uh, he got a couple of strikeouts through nothing but strikes. And then, you know, the three all hitter, uh, Lipkis, Lipkis, I don't know if I pronounced it right, but that, he, he was on, on him all night. And, uh, he had a breaking ball hard right at Martin. Martin fielded it and made a nice play. And it's kind of a sigh of relief because we knew that we were going to get to the ninth and have, have a chance to have Cronin close it out. Obviously, I wish we would have scored a run in the bottom of the eighth. We, had a, you know, we got picked off second with one out and a full count, which uh, they just ran a really good play, but it was a little disappointing. Um, but, uh, you know, Cronin did a great job getting the first hitter and uh, just a super play by, uh, you know, Christian Franklin to, to catch that ball in the alley, I think. Most everybody probably thought that was going to be a double when it left the bat, and that's one re reason he's out there. He's such a good outfielder. The, the strikeout cost he got in the, in the eighth, is that his best breaker? Yeah, I mean, that, he, well, he he probably should have been throwing a few more breakers. You know, looking back on what happened to us, they got us with an 0-2 single on a, on a fastball. It was supposed to be expanded. It didn't. It stayed over the plate. Uh, but yeah, I mean that's one of his. He, he's got a good breaking ball. Uh, he's got developed a good changeup now, and um, you know doesn't use that against right-handers a whole lot. But um, the fastball was good, and then obviously Cronin coming in, and that's you know he he had a little uh, he had some adrenaline tonight, and uh, he knew uh, you know there was a big time safe situation, a big game, and uh, one that we had battled all the way back, and you know he took control of that ninth inning. Is a good hard shoulder okay? Yeah, side. yeah. He just kind of strained it. You know, I'm not going to say it popped out, but it, you know, he hurt a little bit. And uh, first, it was a lot of pain, and it kind of went away. And doctors came and saw him um, up in the locker room, moved him around, said he was fine, and said everything was tight. Um, he'd probably be sore tomorrow, but uh, you know, he felt like he could swing. He went upstairs and swung up in the locker room and showed our trainer he could do it. And uh, when he swung, I think he hit a line drive down the left field line. He, he said he had no pain whatsoever. So, uh, yeah, it was a little scary. Hey, considering Tennessee's ERA and Isaiah, th this is about the wildest yeah. outcome you might have expected. Huh? Yeah, I think just before you came in, that's kind of what I said. I mean, it was uh, – I don't think either coach saw that coming. And, uh, you know, they've their ERA is, 
incredible for this time of year and you know you kind of see why they've got some big time arms and uh, uh, you know Isaiah had been you know pretty consistent all year and uh, tonight wasn't his night uh, but I, but also you got to give you know Tennessee hitters credit they did a really nice job against him but uh, Isaiah just didn't have you know the secondary pitches going like normal and probably would tell you that he that he didn't spot his fastball as good as normal um, you know, I mentioned that it just seemed like the zone was pretty tight there early, both both ways, and uh, you know, I think it was hard on the starters. The, I don't know if the radar guns right with that. I don't remember seeing that many red numbers. Yeah, anything from 95 up on that. I mean, we checked in the track man. You know, there was even some pitches that were by Costi that were 93, and we saw them. And we went up and looked, and I didn't. They came down and said they were 95, but then there were some that. You know, sometimes it reads low, sometimes it reads a little bit high. Um, you know, their right-hander, uh, I know he's hit 99 this year. Um, but, uh, you know, it just makes it, you know, it's just interesting. You know, velocity's awesome. But, you know, we caught up to a couple of them. And I uh, got, got a couple of big swings on them. And, uh, you know, the left-hander, I mean, he's he's got an electric arm now. He's got an arm that... I know a lot of major league teams are going to want here in a couple of years, and uh, I'm sure they want him now. But, uh, you know, that's why it made this game a, a little bit more special for us to come back and win that game when, you know, they had a three run lead on us with those arms available. That ground ball to third base at Nesbitt Field, it went between the guy's legs. Yeah, that's what I was told. Yeah, it's crazy. Have you ever seen a play? No. If his glove hits the runner in the course of the play, is that. Could have been interference. I, I don't really know. I don't know how the rule would read if was he on the base. That's the question. If he's on the base, yeah, he can just stand there. Um, it was just such a strange play. And uh, Nesbitt said that he felt like he had tagged him. Well, you know, somebody saw the replay and said that he actually filled the ball between his legs. And he felt like he tagged him when he fielded it. But... I guess he didn't. If it hits him, if the ball hits him, he's out. If it's if the ball if he's in fair territory, and obviously they called it fair, so yeah. The umpire told me that he wasn't sure if it hit him or not. That's why we were going to kind of look at that as well. But um, you know, at least I'm, I'm just glad he told me what he saw. You know, he didn't make anything up. He just said, "I'm not sure if the ball hit him or not." And I said, "Well, I guess we need to look at it." And I said, "But I think he tagged him." And then I asked Nez, "Would you tag me?" He goes, "I think so." You know, what else was he going to tell me? But uh, uh, obviously, I, they, they didn't feel like that he did. That's you think Heston played out right field? I thought he played good. You know, I mean, for the most part, um, a couple of balls hit pretty good out in the gap that sliced back to him, and one of them, another one he could have caught that uh, Fletcher called him off and ran it down. And I mean, Fletcher made an incredible catch, and then you know we lose that ball. That's how strange that game was. I mean, you lose it. It's a high sky, and and it wasn't out the, out to the east, or really to the south. It was dark, but back here, to the west, it was still some light bluish, and and he just lost it. We, I knew right when he because when he threw his hand down, I knew he was in trouble, and he never found it again. And you know, we just gave him two runs right back, and it's just kind of the way the game works. But we didn't panic, and then they got another hit, and then we're down three. Um, so we really, when you think about it, they hit the ball hard. But we threw a couple of them in there for him, and then that dropped in there, and we just kept fighting back. It was uh, it was crazy. That was a crazy game. Can you comment about the uh, open throwing Charleston out in that yeah. situation, and also the the slide by Goodhart? Yeah, Charleston. I mean, he's a great base stealer. Uh, Opus came firing out of there. I'm thinking that they think thought that we weren't going to throw, that we were just going to arm fake. And uh, they wanted to go ahead and get the, you know, the runner to second, kind of get rid of the double play because they didn't. They, they went on the first pitch, so they felt something. And uh, but uh, we had we had throw through on right there, and he made a great throw, and uh, that changed that whole inning. The game was tied at the time, I think. And uh, instead of runners at first and third, or maybe second and third with, with one out, you know, now we just need to get one out, which we got. And then the slide. Um, you know, he, he got a late break at second. Yeah, I mean, there's two outs. It took him a little bit too long to get going. You got to give credit to the left fielder. Solari made a really nice throw. You know, they let it go, and it just rolled right into the catcher. But, uh, uh, you know, what I was told again, I haven't seen the replay, is that he slid and almost kind of lifted his arm, and he swiped and missed. 
And is that what you guys saw? So, I mean, hey, great job by Goodhart because not only did that give us a two-run lead, it allowed our next hitter to get a base hit, and all of a sudden we had a four-run lead. And we he actually reached back and got the things. Yeah, I mean, that was a big-time slide. After that game the other night, you said Cronin's velocity was down a little bit. If you believe the gun, yeah. it looked like it was really No, it was up tonight. I don't know what the gun we'll, – we'll, we'll look at ours. Yeah, I mean, he was, he was bringing a little bit. And uh, the other night, not so much. So – um, tonight, he, I just feel like that he had a lot of adrenaline going. I think he was frustrated the way it went the other night as well. He has something to prove. And, uh, you know, tonight he was, he was back to his old self as far as velocity. He threw a lot of strikes as well. You mentioned Franklin making a good catch in the ninth. He had the double error earlier in the game. Is that just <laughs> kind of a freshman growing pains? Well, you know, I mean, the ball in left field that he fielded, I mean, he just came up and the ball got away from him, went to the ground, and allowed the runner to make another, advance another base, and then he picked it up and he just threw the ball to, I guess he thought the third base. Well, the third baseman was in the cutoff spot where he's supposed to be, and the shortstop went for the ball on the ground, and he was, there was nobody at third base. And obviously the ball rolled in. So yeah, I would call that a, a little bit of a freshman mistake. And uh, but he also got a big hit for us and made the great play there. That's the thing about the game. It's what I told him. I said, you know, things didn't go our way or we messed up, but you guys just kept fighting. And uh, you know, you created some innings, you got a couple big hits, and we we won the ball game. It was, it was a good comeback. Anybody else? Okay.